This is going to be the most exhaustive, definitive, epic, most unneeded, yet most relevant and important video of the century where I am going to give you a ranking of all 32 root meeples. Now, I have done a video like this before where I ranked 18 or so of Roots Meeples, but there have been a lot more added. We've got the hirelings now. We've got, we've got meeples that are changing the rules here, things we have never even seen. Some of this list has changed from the past, and some of it has stayed the exact same. So let's start there with number 32, my least favorite meeple in the game of Root. That is going to be... Now, a lot of people were saying since the last video that the Arbiter should be getting extra points because it has a mustache. But folks, since when have points, extra points, no less, been given to a mustache? I think the last time it was like the 1980s, okay? Mustaches are not in no matter how hard people try to put them back. I don't like the color of it. I don't like the white and blue. The white and blue doesn't match. That's not the color of a freaking Badger. I see. Sometimes I even. I, sometimes I even forget what this meeple is. All right. If you want to hear more criticism, you can just go watch the other video. But honestly, I still don't like this meeple. I don't even want to play this vagabond because of this meeple, and that is why it is taking the 32nd spot on today's ranking. Next. We've got the 31st rank. That is going to be the Corvid Spies. Look at these goofy little goggles. Just look at those. They don't even look like goggles on this meeple. When I look at this meeple, especially from the front, um, I don't really see how this makes sense, how you can see both of these goggles, yet the bird looks like they're facing the direction and you can still see both of the eyes. You see what I'm saying here, right? When I look at this meeple on the table especially, it just looks funky. It doesn't look right. Sure, I like the color, but honestly, I just prefer the other purple meeple in every single way. These goggles are goofy. Um, and also, if you look at it from behind, the shape is whack. I just don't, I don't see the appeal of the Corvid Spies. Not a good meeple, it's not my favorite, and that is why it is 31st in my ranking. So now we have got one that is still really low and that is going to be the Ronin. Now, if you don't know this, the original kind of vagabond meeple is the thief and this is just a recoloration of that meeple. The Ronin doesn't really have their own meeple per se because even the Ronin is a brown colored raccoon in the actual card artwork and this is a black raccoon. I just don't think that the negative space is doing it any favors here. It looks less like a raccoon than the white raccoon with the black eyes. This one just doesn't really match up or even, it just, it's not as good as the other one. And I don't really like to look at it, honestly. So that is going to be the 30th ranking spot, the Ronin. And the next one is really sad because honestly, I want a wolf meeple to be awesome. I want a wolf meeple to be good, right? But then we've got the ranger. They've got the color, right? Sure, the eye is cool. The nose is completely off. If you look at it from the back, it looks nothing like a wolf. And for some reason, and I don't know why, but for some reason, this meeple is smaller than some of the other Vagabond Meeples. It's smaller than the Thief. A raccoon versus a wolf. You telling me it's not gonna be a little bigger than the raccoon. <sighs> I love wolves, but this wolf is despicable. I don't like this wolf at all. This is not a good wolf. And so because of that, it has to take the 29th spot, the Ranger. I'm sorry. Maybe someday we'll get a good wolf Meeple, but today is not that day. And as number 28th in my list, we have got the River Folk Company. Now, I still stand by my ranking of this faction meeple. I just don't really think it's doing anything special here, especially if you look at it from the back. When I look at it from the back, it looks like a bear. This is an otter we're talking about here. 
It doesn't look anything like an otter. And the way that it just looks, it looks so sad and sullen. And what I expect, my like personal expectations out of an otter that is a shady salesman is I wanna see a facial expression that's similar to that of the lizard cult. They're scamming you, they're trying to get you in. And before you really realize that what they're selling is literally not good. And just look at that flat expression. It just, it doesn't work. The Riverfolk company really didn't raise much when I'm adding in all these extra meeples. They are still low. They are still gonna be at the 28th spot. The people that disagree can disagree. All right, and now we are moving to the last dynasty meeple. Now this is the kind of new bird hireling. Uh, this one has an interesting look. Now, one of the reasons why I don't like it is because it's so much emphasis on the beak and the eye. And for some reason, when I look at it, it just doesn't look right to me. Uh, when I turn it around, it's starting to look a little bit like a different kind of bird. Not one that I would expect to be blue, but one that I would expect to be pink. Kind of like a flamingo of sorts. It's still kind of boring, and I think that the original Eerie is just more iconic. Um, this one isn't much of a change from that original, and so therefore it is taking that, that 27th spot on my list. So that is going to be number 27, the last dynasty. All right, and now in spot number 26, we have got the Warm Sun Prophets. Now this is the group that is trying to really take the Lizard Cult Meeple out. It's got some more details, it's got a little tongue, it's got those nice little dots uh, kind of on the back of the meeple. But folks, look at this meeple from the back and tell me that looks like a lizard for one. It, it doesn't. Um, I've never met a lizard with a round face like that. It's too round, it just doesn't look right. The expression is not as interesting as that of the lizard cult, so unfortunately I can't even give it points there. Um, I do like some of the details, but all in all, I think it just kind of looks weird and, and kind of goofy, and honestly probably just shouldn't be on the battlefield, just doesn't look right. So. That is kind of my problem with the Warm Sun Prophets. That is why it is at number 26 on my list. And now we are coming to rank 25 on the list. And this is one that took a substantial dip down the rabbit hole here. Um, that is going to be the Keepers in Iron Meeple. Now, this one is pretty high. This one was pretty high. But remember the reasons why I liked it. I liked it for its unique color and its unique height. Now, it is not the only meeple of this color, and it is not the biggest meeple that exists. Taking both of those away from it make it drop down substantially for me. Um, I'm not super into it. Um, who knows, maybe I have a thing against badgers. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. There's just some aspects of this that are a little goofy. I think it's a little too tall for its size. It's a little too thin and too tall at the same time. It looks a little weird. I don't know. It's definitely not my favorite meeple. I do, you know, like I said, I'm always trying to give credit where credit is due. I do like the kind of ridges on the back of its head. I'm not sure what they're supposed to represent on the meeple, but I do appreciate their, that they're there. It's kind of a nice tactile feel. Um, but that is the Keepers and Iron for me. It's just not as great of a meeple as it was before when it was the only one of its kind. Now there are bigger meeples, there are meeples of the same color. So that is the Keepers and Iron at rank number 25. Now the next meeple we're gonna talk about is that darn little vagabond that goes around crafting uh, away their lives. You know who it is, it's gonna be the Tinker. Now we all know that I have big feelings about the Tinker, the Tinker is Kind of insane, very, very powerful faction in the game. Um, I, you know, I like the fact that the details on this, they make, they actually give the faction meeple a face that really resembles the artwork. And for that, I give it, you know, kudos to the designer here. This is a really well-crafted colored meeple here. However, the color of it is so darn boring. I mean, and when I look at this meeple, it is, it is bland. 
Um, it's close to that of the Ranger, um, but it's a little darker. I mean, they're, you know, shades of gray. It doesn't get much better. The yellow is cool and unique, but it still doesn't look very good with that gray. These are not colors that are very flattering together. So for that, and also for the Tinker's bad and sassy reputation, we're gonna have to put the Tinker at spot number 24 here. And that's gonna bring us to spot number 23. We have got the Eerie Dynasty. Now, this meeple is still uh, just as plain as I remembered it, just as boring as I remember. Um, I still like its stark color, but I will say that the expression just doesn't give enough here to really gather a story as to what's going on. Sure, it looks angry, but why no feathers? Why no, you know, little details or anything? It's just a beak, an eye, an eyebrow, and, and they say that was enough, but I think we can go further. I think we can make this look more evil. There is more words being spoken with less in some of these other meeples, so to see this one so bland, is honestly a little depressing. And so that is why the Eerie Dynasty is at spot number 23. All right. Oh boy. We have got uh, a fun little lineup for you the next two here. So spot number 22, we have got the Sunward Expedition. This is going to be the new little duchy that we've got, the new kind of hireling duchy. Um, this color is boring. I. You all know that I don't really like the color of this whole faction. Uh, and, you know, here's the thing is that the detail of the hat is nice, but the size of this meeple is smaller than that of its original brother, the, the underground duchy. And so because of that, it is just less interesting on the table. I'm not a fan of that fleshy color. It's scary to me. It's not a good looking color. It, it freaks me out. I mean, it's close. I'm just saying. Um, this is not what I want to see in a good root meeple. Um, and so that is why it is spot number 22, but I'm going to go ahead and pull into frame the underground duchy, which is spot number 21 for me. And this one's just a little bit bigger, as we can see. Uh, it's still that same kind of color. Actually, the you know, now that I'm looking at them right up against one another, another notch down for Sunward Expedition, it's even a worse color than the underground duchy. It's just slightly less fleshy. It's like muted golem skin color. It's not very good. Um, and so because of the size difference, the smaller meeple, it's less iconic. The underground duchy just kind of beats it just by a tad putting it at spot number 21 for me. But overall, I'm not a fan of either of these meeples. They're not my, my favorites. I don't like the fleshy color. Like I said, it creeps me out. Spot number 20 is going to be the forest patrol. We have got this meeple. Now, for being a faction that is patrolling in a forest, it sure looks like it's not focusing on patrolling. It's looking the other way. It's being a little sly. This expression gives me more of a, I'm trying to sneak around vibe rather than a patrol vibe. In fact, the Marquise de Cat would have been a better meeple for the forest patrol than the forest patrol meeple due to the expression alone, let's be honest. However, I will give credit where credit is due. I think it's interesting to have that little kind of plus sign on the body of the meeple to kind of signify, um, the, you know, the field hospital ability, maybe. I don't know. Either way, this meeple's just not as good. If you look at it from the back, I think it's cute. I, I do like that they add a little fur on both sides, but it's not as iconic as the original Marquise meeple. And so that is kind of why it's at spot number 20 for me, the Forest Patrol. Not that great could have been better kind of deal. All right, so spot number 19 is taken up by the adventurer. Now, this owl, this questing owl, I think it has a cute face. I think it's an adorable expression. The color leaves much to be desired, and when you look at it from the back, it honestly looks like a grave or possibly a, who's that Pokemon picture, you know, Diglett, but it's just, it's not, it's lacking something. And I think it does look like an owl. I think they did a good job making it look like an owl. And you know, it's kind of funny because you know, since they could have done, you know, like the other birds, they usually do the beak side out. But for an owl, since they have a flat face, they kind of kept it in the front. I think that was kind of really clever. But all in all, there's just other meeples that are better than this. And this one just kind of has not enough pizzazz with it to be seen as anything more than what you see here. It's just kind of, boring in a way. So that is going to be the adventurer. 
my wife loves the adventurer so i mean on that premise alone i I couldn't put it any higher, but I also can't go any lower with it. So that's going to be the adventurer. Next up, we got spot number 18, the Lord of the Hundreds Warrior Meeple. Now you're gonna see that I actually separated in this list the Lord of the Hundreds from the Warlord Meeple. So that one's gonna come later in the list, but the Lord of the Hundreds without the banner, just the warrior, is spot number 18 for me. I think this is a good meeple. It looks like a rat. It does a good job without the details and with the details showing that it is a rat. I think that some of the details that I like are the little ear detail, a couple of the little whiskers, but I'll be honest, this is just not a meeple that I'm very like excited to see on the table. It kind of brings about, I don't know, vibes of anger, vibes of, of war, um, but it, you know, I, I saw some concept art on the original way this Meeple's direction was gonna go, and I kind of honestly preferred that direction. Um, and, you know, something to kind of feed off of that will kind of come about later, but for now, just know that it's spot number 18 in my heart, the Lord of the Hundreds Warrior Meeple here. I've seen better. Um, next up is going to be the Exile. This is going to be spot number 17. Now, this is the first kind of big meeple on the on my list. And honestly, this is a good meeple. This is, um, it's fun, it's, it's angry, it's big. And I do enjoy that. One of the best parts about this meeple, honestly, is the fact that when you look at it from the back, it looks like a bear. They did a great job, you know? <laughs> You know, the, the, the sad thing is that if you look at the, you know, the otter, just not to bring him back in this, but if you look at the otter from the back, they look like a smaller and a bigger version of the same thing, but this, this is supposed to be an otter. Um, but you know, I digress. Um, the exile is cool, but it is kind of simple. And you know, that's why it's where it's at on the list. I mean, there's other bigger meeples that have a bit more depth and a bit more detail that put it higher up on the list and isn't as iconic as I would hope it to be. You know, there's just, there's more better meeples ahead, but that is going to be spot number 17, the exile. And that's gonna bring us to spot number 16, rank number 16, the Marquise de Cat. Now I think this one still holds up. We're kind of, getting somewhere in the middle of this list. And I wanna say some positives about this guy. I think that the expression is perfect. I think that this is just kind of that iconic meeple. Like this is this is what, you know, when I see this meeple, it is iconic root for me. Um, I think that it is wonderfully crafted. It's, it's perfectly simple enough. It looks just like a cat from the backside. From the front side, you can see the eyes. Um, I love how angry they are, how determined yet ambitious they are. And I think that this is kind of the perfect blend of evil but ambitious. And I think that's perfect for this faction. It is it is wonderful. And so because of that, because of the, the beautiful orange color as well, I just think this is just the better version, uh, the, the better orange meeple in my opinion, um, the the <laughs> the Marquise de Cat at spot number 16. Well done meeple, you know, I still love it. But you know, there is still 15, 15 more meeples that I deemed better than that one. So we're at 15 now. We're getting to the bit. This is like kind of the middle of the list here. So this one I was disappointed about. And the reasons were because, you know, I am a huge Woodland Alliance main. Um, I love the Woodland Alliance. So when I saw that we were going to possibly be getting another kind of Woodland Alliance meeple, along came the Spring Uprising. And I think it's good. I think it's good. I just think it's not interesting. It's a little boring. All we've got are eyes and a shape here. All we've got our eyes in a shape and I don't see much expression in it. I don't see much interest. Um, it does look like a bunny from the backside, which is good. Um, but I think that its face could be, you know, I can see multiple different faces in this. Like there's just not enough of an expression to really come up with a real idea of how this meeple feels or, or acts. It doesn't even look that innocent. It doesn't look like it has expression. It's very flat, but the shape is so iconic and so good that it's still at spot number 15 for me, but it overall was kind of a disappointment. Um, but it, it, here's the thing. It's a really good shaped meeple. So that is going to be the spring uprising at spot number 15 for me.
And now next, I really think on color alone, it is here, um, but also a lot of details for this. Um, we've got spot number 14, the Highway Bandits. Now these, these bad boys, they look great. Um, it is interesting that their color palette is pink. Um, I like the color though. Um, however, the only notch that I'm gonna give on this one, because I think it's really a great meeple, the details from the front are wonderful. If you look at this meeple from the back though, but this doesn't look anything like the porcupine that it is supposed to, or, or is it a hedgehog? Either way, um, it doesn't look like either of those to me. And so from the back, this one just doesn't, it doesn't push the boundaries enough to get any higher than this. I think the color's cool. I think the color of the details are wonderful from the front, but the back is just so dang disappointing that it just can't get any higher than number 14 for me. 13, rank 13 on my list is going to be the Scoundrel. I think this is the perfect Halloween meeple. Like I said last time I voted for this. It is actually pretty much the exact shape of the Marquise the Cat, only it is in black. But the details, the details, um, the devil's in the details as they say. I just, the pumpkin face on it is just wonderful. I think it looks perfect. Um, I think the expression is that perfect kind of crazy that you'd like to see in a torch wielding uh, meeple that blows up entire clearings. I think this is exactly the vibe you want to go for in the scoundrel, right? There are other meeples that are better, but I still think that this is a good meeple and there's not much bad to say about this meeple from either side and kind of from, you know, kind of going up here, I'm only gonna be justifying why they're at where they're at, but I don't have a lot of negatives to say from now on. They might sneak in here and there, but this is a good meeple, the scoundrel. And so that is going to be spot number 13. And we are going to move in to another creature that is also crazy that likes to blow up things just like the scoundrel. That's going to be number 12, the Corvid Conspiracy. Now, this one still gets its high points, even though there are more factions with, with white eyes now in the game. This this color is still perfect, and this shape is still perfect for a crow. I still have an attachment to this faction. Um, you know, I think it looks perfect. I, I think that its face is so blank and, and kind of chaotic, uh, and I think that's perfect for this faction because that's literally what the Corvid Conspiracy do. They are plotting around, laying down bombs, causing confusion and, and riling up people. And so I think that this is the perfect meeple to really show that and in spot number 11 we have got the harrier what an adorable little animal we've got here this flying squirrel here now the facial expression is adorable very smiley just like in the artwork i like the brown kind of body of it it's it's dark but it's not too dark you can still see it on on most of the boards pretty clearly and the color of that blue uh in the details is just so wonderfully done i still like the asymmetric shape of this meeple i like the fact that one of the ears are here the other ear is actually in the details but then you can see that big tail kind of coming up on the one side if you didn't know that's actually the tail not its other ear um and i think this meeple is just adorable from the back from the front i think it's a really really good look meeple on both sides. It's very well done and well crafted and I like the facial expression and even though it's kind of a boring color, it's it's not perfect brown, it's kind of a raspberry brown which I really like and appreciate in my meeples. And so that is going to be the Harrier at spot number 11, which is going to bring me to spot number 10, the Thief. This one actually raised up a bit for me. And I think it's because this is kind of iconic root right here. Like when I see this meeple, it brings me back to the old days when there used to only be this, the Woodland Alliance, the Marquise de Cat, and the Erie Dynasty. Unfortunately for the Erie Dynasty, it's still low, but <laughs> um, this meeple is really good. I like this meeple. I think it's adorable. Obviously it's counterpart. I am not so thrilled about the, the black version of this meeple, but this one, it looks like a raccoon. And I think that I needed to give it more credit where credit was due that you can see this on the board. It looks like a raccoon. And honestly, it looks pretty darn good. And, and that is really why it is where it is, this thief meeple. Um, I like the expression. It looks like it's sneaking around, which is exactly what the thief does. And so because of that, it really is kind of putting this one up a little higher for me on the list. And I like the fact that, you know, I'm willing to change, I'm willing to grow, and I'm willing to see kind of, you know, 
how I've adapted throughout my last list and through this list, you know, my opinions on the subject. And so that is going to be the thief in spot number 10. Folks, we only got nine more to go. We only got nine more to go. And so spot number nine is going to be the Warlord Meeple. Now, this is the second time we have seen a rat on this list. This is the rat with the banner. I think this is such a freaking cool meeple. It looks great on the board. It looks a lot better than the, than the plain rat on the board. This is that moody rat. I will say one thing. I will say that one thing that I kind of wished was that this meeple looked a little different than the other ones. Um, just because I think that, you know, to distinguish them a little bit more like make the body of this meeple a little bit bigger. I think it's more iconic with the banner, obviously, but I think that if they had just made it a different mold, that would have worked too, or a different size. I, I think this is a great meeple. I like the banner, like I said, obviously, I mean, I like it. It's, it's spot number nine out of 32. But just some of the things that I kind of wished was that it would match the expressions that you find the Warlord have in um, the actual game a little bit more. But all in all, this is a really great meeple, and it's one of the coolest ones because it is a meeple that is holding an object. We don't have really any other meeples that are like, the actual object that it's holding is outside of its mold. I think that's just wonderful, and it's very iconic on the table. That's going to be the Warlord at spot number nine. Which brings me to spot number eight, which it's sad to see this one so low compared to my other list, but that's just because there's so many other great meeples for me. Like for example, this used to be third in my last ranking and now it is spot number eight, which is going to be the Vagrant. I love the Vagrant, I love this meeple, but there are just some other meeples that have really just pushed the limits on what meeples can be that have brought this one to spot number eight. That's still really good in the space fan of like 32 root meeples. Um, I think this meeple is wonderful. I think it's adorable. I love the pink accent. I love the white body on this meeple. Those teeth are adorable and it really captures the expression of a possum. Like the Vagrant is also like my favorite Vagabond faction to play. And so I'm so glad that like I got one of the good ones, you know, <laughs> I could have been like a Tinker main and loved the Tinker so much and then just hated that that meeple so much or, or a ranger even worse oh my gosh but you know this is my favorite vagabond to play and it is the best meeple for a vagabond you're not going to see another vagabond on this list this is the only vagabond meeple i feel like you really really need maybe this and the thief now spot number seven is going to be taken by the river folk flotilla now this is a great meeple i think this is a very interesting meeple it's huge it's a very big size and like i was saying like out of big meeples like this beats the exile for me any day um the fact that it has three different characters is really interesting there's three different little otters one thing that i'm just gonna say that i appreciate about this is that if you turn this meeple around you look at the shapes of those little heads on that meeple they each look like an otter you turn the river folk back around and it looks like a bear i'm just gonna say it it doesn't look like an otter but these these are capturing that otter energy that i was hoping to get out of this standard river folk this is capturing the energy that i want to see out of this beautiful color of meeple these are adorable otters but they still look evil suspicious they're not as flat of expression They've got that detail to them, you know? I like that they all kind of have a little different attitude too. You know, one's looking to the right, one's looking to the left, one's looking at you, you know? I like that, I like that, it's good. Um, and so, spot number seven is really high on a list of 32 meeples, I'm just gonna say. This is a great, great meeple. I love it and I am so happy when I draft it in my games playing with the hirelings. It's just a wonderful looking meeple. And that is going to bring us to spot number six, which is going to be the Vault Keepers. I mean, this is obviously the better silver meeple. The fact that it's got a hood and the fact that you can tell that it's wearing a hood from the back even without the details showing is amazing. But the little key detail is so cool. And you know, like Vault Keepers, so they got the key for their vaults. I love that little detail. The eye kind of peeking out of the hood just like that is just so perfect. And the silver color works with it perfectly. I love all the details about this meeple and I think it really encaptures and embodies what they were going for with this meeple. They are the keepers of the vault and this meeple looks like it would keep a vault, especially with that adorable little key. 
Actually, you know, bonus points for the key. It looks like the Where's Waldo key when you're trying to find it in a Where's Waldo book, and I'm a huge fan of Where's Waldo, so just from that alone, it's get, it's got the extra points. But six is nothing to scoff about. That is a huge, 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 huge position in, in a ranking of 32. The Vault Keepers are very high on my list because it is a wonderful meeple. But there are still five more meeples, five more meeples that raised the bar for me, that, that, that really pushed the boundaries. These are my top five meeples in root out of 32 meeples, starting with my number five, the Lizard Cult. Now the Lizard Cult is still high up on this list because I'm just gonna say this meeple is still perfect for what it is. They look like they're trying to get you into their cult. The expression is awesome. The eye, the detail, the little scales on the back, the shape looks like a lizard. The color is still so unique. Even with the other faction that was kind of like the other hireling, it's still slightly different of a color. This one's more yellow, but this one's more electric yellow, you know? This one's more unique, it's more, prominent and i think that this meeple is still just so darn perfect now true it's going from second to fifth but i don't really see that as much of a difference out of you know 32 meeples to 18 i mean we're really getting high up here i mean number five is a great honor and i just think this is a perfect meeple for this position especially with the next couple meeples coming up now we are getting into rank four which is going to be the furious protector I love stags. I love stags. I've always been House Baratheon, and this has captured the stag right here. It has captured the stag. It's it's perfect. I love that it's just this giant looming piece. It's the best big model in the game, in my opinion. I love all the details. I love all the fur. I love the nose. I love the, the, the details in the horns. I mean, it's just, it's perfect. It looks amazing, and I just love its size. It is, it is awesome. I absolutely love it. One thing I wish out of the ranger, just a side note, just, you know, just compare. This is a wolf, this is a stag. I would like to see the wolf be a little bigger. But that's okay. Let's focus on the stag right now. Let's focus on the fact that this is a perfect meeple. This is also my favorite color of yellow. I love just slightly muted yellow. It's like mustard. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect color and a great, great condiment. I love mustard. And so to see this meeple come out, and be bringing so much heat really got me excited to see a stag of such stature kind of standing in the woodland and looking so beautiful out there in the clearing. It's just perfect. Great, great meeple. And because of its size, it's perfect to have other meeples in front of it because this one has a really important ability as a hireling and you kind of need to know where it is. So it's just a perfect size for what it is. And that is going to be number four, the Furious Protector, which brings me to my top three. And next we have got as my number three, the adorable flute playing weasels of the popular band Hireling Pack. They are perfect, I love them. I love the fact that you can see their hands in there and they're holding a flute. And I guess I lied when there was an object that kind of comes out of the meeple, you know, the warlord being the only one. Well, the this band actually, you can see the flute kind of coming out of the meeple as well. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's adorable. It's eyes closed as well with the little music symbol. Oh, this is a perfect meeple and its color is exotic. It's perfect. It's artsy. It's fun. It brings about that kind of jazzy musical feel. You know, this person is really getting into it. They're playing their flute for all the animals of the woodland and you can see it. It's selling it. It's selling it to me right now. And that's what brings this adorable weasel to spot number three for me. It is just a wonderful meeple, and I'm so glad that it exists within this game. But there are only two meeples that really topped it. There are two meeples that I thought to be ahead of this adorable flute playing meeple. We're gonna go with spot number two, the Flame Bearers. This is what I wanted to see in a rat meeple. This is the perfect rat meeple in my opinion. Honestly, I would 
I want to so bad just buy more sets of hirelings just to have this be the wrap meeple that I use. The chip in the ear. It's the details, man. This looks good. The scarring around the eye and the detail of the ear there, the blacked out nose. I mean, this is a detailed meeple that looks furious. It looks good. It looks like a rat and it looks evil. It looks evil, but I just, I think it's that chip in the ear that really just brings it so high for me. I just love that chip in the ear. And I really wish that the standard meeple had a chip in the ear or something else to just add that detail. I mean, this is such a perfect meeple. I love it so much. It's so deserving of this color red. Like it's perfect. This rat is perfect. And so that is why it is spot number two two for me. And, you know, before you freak out, before you think, oh my gosh, Sam is so unoriginal. Here's the deal. Last time I just showed you my tattoo and that was proof enough as to why the Woodland Alliance meeple takes the top spot. This time I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. The Woodland Alliance meeple is the best meeple in Root. And the reason why is because this meeple gives the story of Root within its meeple design. It tells the story of a game that is adorable in its artwork. It looks, you know, not so dangerous, not so difficult, but when you engage with it, you have no idea what you're gonna get into. You have no idea what's gonna happen next. And that is the game of Root, and that is the Woodland Alliance meeple. These adorable mice that can blow up and cause rebellion at any moment. This face looks so unassuming, so adorable. The eyes, the little teeny nose, and the little, ugh, it's a perfect meeple. And the fact that it looks like both a mouse and toast from the back is adorable. Folks, I got a tattooed on my body, so obviously I love this meeple. But, I mean, I have my reasons. I truly think that, that this meeple right here embodies the game of Root for me. Not only is it one of the base four factions in the game, but it's also a perfect representation of its many layers. Complex, interesting, rebellion, root, cute from the outside, difficult and evil on the inside at times. That is root and that is the Woodland Alliance people. And it is the reason why it takes the cake as spot number one. It gets the crown, it gets the duchy's crown. The duchy doesn't get the crown, the Woodland Alliance does. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you so much for watching my ranking of 32 meeples. This has been exhaustive and definitive. My voice is going out, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and check out the other Root content that I have on the channel. You know me, I absolutely love Root. If you are missing any of Leader Games merchandise, anything that you wanna buy, whether it's a hoodie or maybe some of the sets or games, well, this channel is actually sponsored by Leader Games, and if you use the link down below to shop any of their products, it's actually going to directly benefit the channel and the work that I'm doing here. So thank you so much to Leader Games for sponsoring today's video. But everyone, that is it for the definitive Meeple ranking. I will see you next time.